Today, I, I want to finish up this Dirty Job series. Today is part four in my Dirty Job series, and today I titled this message, Dirty Ministry. Dirty Ministry. I believe everyone in this church at some point in their journey in life, including this pastor here today, has probably thought about giving up. Thought about giving up and throwing in the towel and or quitting. Quitting your marriage and quitting your dreams and walking away from the Lord or quitting ministry or I've even heard this before, I'm going to quit life. I've heard that before. I hear a lot of Christians in a lot of churches say, I'm tired of the battle. Tired of the battle. I'm giving up and I'm quitting. My goal today, my goal is, as your pastor and as your friend in this message today is to convince you and persuade you not to give up. Not to give up. Not to stop. Not to quit. Don't stop your calling. Don't stop preaching. Get involved. Get dirty. Don't, don't stop your dream. Don't, keep, don't be a dreamer. Just be a dreamer. You say, Brian, what if they don't come true? Be a dreamer. Just be a dreamer. And, and I promise you, God will work with that. Uh, too many people are giving up. Before I get in this message, I, I, um, I was re doing some research on this sermon, and I, I wanted to, to lay something in your lap today. I thought about a Navy SEAL. A Navy SEAL is a part of the military. This candidate who wants to be a, or desires to be a Navy SEAL trains for two years. He trains for two years before testing ever to be a, a SEAL, a Navy SEAL. And the last week of becoming a Navy SEAL is called Hell Week. It's called Hell Week. And during Hell Week, they are constantly in motion. They're constantly moving. Uh, they're always uh, cold. They're always hungry. They're always wet. They've got mud up to their, to their, to their, uh, up to their knees and up to their elbows. And the, the, the says this, they only get four hours of sleep every night. If you want to be a Navy SEAL, I'm telling you, you've got to be sold out to be a Navy SEAL. They only get four hours of sleep every night. The trainees... The, the Navy SEALs who are preparing to go into that battle, they eat approximately 7,000 calories a day, but they still lose weight. The average person will consume 2,000. But the Navy, Navy SEAL is working so hard and so intense, they eat 7,000 calories, but they still lose weight. I've done a, a bio on this. It said that 75% of the Navy SEALs never make it past the first test. Out of 168 hours a week, I want you to listen to this, a Navy SEAL works 134 of them. 134 hours. The instructor of the Navy SEAL says this, it's in their mind, that it's their minds that give up on them. It's their minds that give up, not their bodies. See, to be a Navy SEAL, you got, that, that, that conductor, he said these words, he said 90% is mental in your mind and only 10% is physical. 90% of the battle is in their mind. And only 10% is with their body. There was something amazing as I read this story. If, if you want to be a Navy SEAL and you want to get dirty and get into the, the job of being a Navy SEAL and protecting your country, you do things that you normally don't do. This Navy SEAL goes down to the, to the barracks and he digs ditches. He puts a telephone poles on, the, on their heads and there's one in the front and one in the back and they get on the beach where the sand is at and they take off running. I'm telling you, they only get four hours of sleep. They're hungry, they're wet, they're in mud. They want to give up. And the instructor says this, if you want to give up, you got to do something. you got to break rank. you got to break rank. And you got to get up where everybody can see you and you got to go up. There's a big old bale. It's bigger than this one. But there's a big old bale at the front of the camp. And if that Navy SEAL wants to give up, he comes in front of everybody, he breaks rank, he grabs the bell, and he rings it. He rings the bell. And what that does, Donna, that tells everybody in the camp, I broke rank, I'm giving up, there's too much pressure, I can't stand it, so I'm ringing the bell. And I come today to tell you and make a proposal to you that we need to understand that we're in a spiritual battle in this world right now. I know you know in your mind, yes, I'm a, I, I'm a spirit, I have a soul, but I live in a body. But here, I want to go deeper with you today. The battle is not with your family. Y'all listen to me. The battle is not with your boss at work. The battle is not with your pastor or your deacon. 
The battle is not that. Your battle, listen to me, your battle is in your mind right now. The enemy wants your mind. And if he will make you ring the bell and give up, the battle is over. The battle is over. Can I tell you we have too many Christians ringing the bell? Can I tell you we got too many churches today that are ringing the bell. We got too many youth at school that gets in a tight situation and the pressure and the heat is on and they ring the bell. We got too many pastors in the ministry that said, I'm called by God and then something happens, but they ring the bell. Deacons the same way, members the same way. We got too many people when the heat is on and you're down in the barricade and nobody is with you, that's when you got to make your mind up. Listen to me. You've got to make your mind up. Elkhorn, the instructor said these words, and I, t- I took it to heed. He said, the biggest job of mine is to make the Navy SEAL believe that he can do it. He can do it. We know the Bible. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. We know Scripture here, but we got too many people ringing the bell. we got too many daddies walking away. we got too many mamas walking away. We got too many youth that need to stand up and quit ringing the bell and start sounding the bell and sounding the alarm and saying, Thus saith the Lord in this house. Amen. Somebody give God praise in this house. I'm going to tell you something. Don't ring the bell. I come by this morning to tell, tell you, don't ring the bell. I care how tired you get. I've been in the ministry for 16 years. And I'm going to tell you, I've had some hell weeks. I'm going to tell you, I've been married for coming on 20, and guess what? I've had some hell weeks. And I know you don't like preaching like this, but hallelujah in hell, I'm going to drop it in your lap. God didn't say it's going to be easy. He just said hallelujah, it'd be worth it. Amen. Somebody praise him. I feel the Lord in this house today. Don't ring the bell. Don't ring the bell. Turn your neighbor and say, I'm not ringing that bell today. Uh, uh, uh. Say, I'm not going to ring it tomorrow. Come on. I'm not going to ring it the rest of my life. Tommy, you don't do freedom reigns for Tommy. Tommy, you do it for God. Don't ring the bell. Donna, you don't do the children's ministry for the money. Don't ring the bell. Greg? I ain't no ding a How do you follow that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ain't no dingling, hallelujah. That's what he said. Or maybe that's the problem. Got too many dinglings in the church. You don't get your way, dingling. You get mad, dingling. You know what I'm saying? Gosh, good gracious. You got ten toes. I'm gonna get about nine point five. Listen, because here's the deal. If there was ever a time, listen to me, if there was ever a time to get on board, get on the first floor, get fired up, get built in and tied into the ministry and sound the alarm, today is the day to sound the alarm. Hallelujah. We got too many people going back to the old vomit. We got too many people going back to their old ways. You know why? They give up, they ring the bell, and they say, man, I can't make it. And so they give up, it's in their mind. And if you make your mind up right now, listen to me, if you make your mind up right now, I'm going to win it, I'm not stopping, I'm not going to quit. If I've got to make you mad, you'll get over it. I am not ringing the bell. God done brought me too far to ring the bell. And listen to me, if you're sitting there and you're mad right now, you know why you're mad? Because you're not doing nothing with your life. You're not doing nothing with your life. You're sitting on your blessed assurance. And you want God to answer your prayers. But I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus, you've got to make your mind up, come hell or high waters, I'm going to praise the Lord. No matter, you can't stop me. I'm not going to be quiet. I don't care. Listen, hallelujah. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. Look at this. Make up your mind. That's the problem. 
We've not made our minds up. We're still weighing in the balance. Some of you are here today, you're trying to figure out, should I worship, should not I worship? Let me go ahead and solve that problem for you. You were created to worship. Do I like this church or do I not? Watch this. God don't care if you like El Corn, if you don't like El Corn. He just wants you to worship Him. He don't really care. Have y'all noticed that heaven's not up to vote? Donna, we don't have a choice if we're going to build His kingdom or not. Because if I am sold out and I am a Christian and the Holy Spirit lives in me, I desire what my Father in heaven desires. He desires lost people. He desires for churches to be come back to where he built the church. How did God build the church? God built the church upon the rock. God built the church upon his gifts. God built the church upon his talents. And any more you use your gifts and your talents, people want to debate it. Is it real? Is it not? Is this good? Is that bad? Is that tongues? Is that not tongues? Where is this at? Where is that at? Watch this. If you'll read your Bible, you'll understand. That's good preaching. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 39. But we are not of them who draw back. I love that verse. Into the into perdition. In other words, I am not of those who draw back, keep dropping back into sin. That's what perdition is, sin. You say, Brian, you're really stepping on my toes. Today. Watch this. We, watch this. I, I'm going to break this teaching up because it needs to be broke up. I'm not a sinner. A sinner is somebody who does not know Jesus. Now, I am a saint that sins, but I'm not a sinner. Y'all got me? That's a good word because listen to me. I hear this all the time from Christians. Well, I'm nothing but an old sinner. I'm not. I've been redeemed. I've been saved. I've been born again. I've got God in me. Hallelujah. I don't know what y'all feel, but it's good up here. It says, I'm not of them who draw back into sin and perdition, but of them, I am of them that believe to the saving of the souls. Hallelujah. I'm not of those who don't want to have nothing with Jesus Christ. Well, the, the Bible says that darkness and light can't be in the same equation. If I'm light and God's in me, I can't hang out in dark places. And you know what needs to be brought back into the churches? That the unpopular teaching is holiness. Holiness. Set apart. God in me. Clean hands. Be a foot washer. Keep your temple clean. That's what needs to be back in the churches. That's what needs to be back in the churches. That's what I miss about old, old, old-fashioned Pentecost. That's what I miss, miss about old, old preachers and stuff. Boy, they'd spit on you and love it, wipe it off of you, say, again, hallelujah. They'd do it again. I like that Holy Ghost spitting preachers, amen? I like that preacher to get in my grill and step on my toes and wake me up and say, you know what? Sin will kill you, but God will save you. Somebody praise him in this house. That's what we need back in God's house, some good old-fashioned preaching. Ooh, I feel it. I'm not of those who don't participate. And boy, it took me a long time to get to this point in my life. Now, I'm just being honest with you, but here's what I've realized. Not everybody's going to be for you. Here's what I've realized. That to be called by God, there's going to be some dark moments. There's going to be some hell weeks in my life. It's not going to be easy all the time. The grass is not greener on the other side. you still got to mow the lawn. So no matter where you're at in your walk with God, I want to encourage you today, don't ring the bell. You know, some people start off good, on fire, strong. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They'll, they'll, they'll be on fire. They'll have a zeal and determination. But somewhere along the way, somewhere along the path, Satan starts messing with their mind. I hear it every day. You guys, you, you do too. You work with them. I'm just no good. And boy, I've got this sin in my life. And this, that, and the other. Satan will start messing with their minds. And they draw back into their own hell weeks. I'm telling you the truth. I want you to listen to me. I am not your pastor. And I am not your preacher. To get anything from God. Or from this church. Or from you. I am your pastor and your preacher because I believe, hallelujah, I believe what I preach. 
I love Jesus with all that I am. He's all that I've got. So listen to me. I, well, Holly, what do I got to draw back to? Where am I going to go? Who am I going to hang out with? I'm different than when I used to be, Mark. I can't hang out in the bars like I once did because I don't fit in. I don't fit in no more. So something's got to change in me. Something, you say, Brian, you're saying that you can't do this. I'm telling you, I can't. Guys, listen to me. This world needs to see an authentic Jesus. This world needs and desires to see a church back on its knees. And I beg today, no matter where you're at, get the holiness of God back in your life. You grab the altar by the horns and don't you let go until God touches you. The world is looking at the church for answers. Have y'all not noticed? Every time a tragedy happens, every time a bombing happens, Every time a 9-11 happens, the first place they run to is Jesus. They want it whether they realize it or not. This old world needs Jesus, but they need a Savior. And I want to be a light. I want to be a beacon. I want to add flavor. I want to put salt in somebody's oats. Hallelujah. I want them to drink the waters of living Jesus. I don't want them to thirst for the world no more. And I beg today the best way I can, the best way I can, listen to me, You've got to get back to God. And I made my mind up. Come hell or high waters, I'll never ring the bell. Listen to me. My prayer for you is the same thing for me this week, hell week. I don't know where you're at, but I made my mind up. Whether a pastor or not a pastor, I'll never ring the bell. I mean it. I mean it with all I am. Watch this. I wrote this down very carefully this week, and it makes me tremble as I even speak it to you right now. I wrote in my notes, Lord, if you never answer another prayer, I'll never ring the bell. You know how long it has taken me to get to that point in my life? But boy, I just tremble. I said, I didn't even want to write it at first. But all of a sudden, my spirit started leaping. He said, Brian, what you've got, nobody else can give you. Brian, what's in you is God. He loves you. He will answer your prayer. But if God never answered another prayer, I will never ring the bell. I will never stop. I'm not going to back down. I'm not quitting. I'll never ring the bell. Somebody praise him. I'm not ringing the bell no more. I'm not stopping no more. I'm going to praise my Lord today. Oh, come on and praise the Lord. We're not ringing the bell. We're not going to do it no more. I'm not backing out. Dana, I'm not backing out on you. Blake, I'm not backing out on you. That gone it? I had to fight this battle with Blake. Blake came into my life when he was two. And in my mind, I said, I'll always be stepdaddy. That's a lie from hell. It took me forever to accept Blake as my son, that gift from God. And you know what I almost done so many times? I almost rang the bell on my stepson, on my boy, on my child that God has given me. I don't know who I'm ministering to today. But here's what God's saying. How you train him, you still will stand before me. Because if I am the daddy of the house, the God man of the house, the leader of my home, Glenn, you will stand, Greg, you will stand, you will stand, you will stand, I will stand. We all will stand before the Lord. See, we know it here. But how many of you got a bell in your hand right now getting ready to stop ministry? Get ready to quit your marriage. Getting ready to quit things in your life that you know God's appointed you to. I cannot tell you. I'm going to be, be honest with y'all today. I have to. I can't tell you in the ministry how many times I wanted to grab the bell and ring it. I can't tell you how many times in my marriage, come on, somebody help me preach in this house today, that I wanted to ring the bell and stop. But something in me, I know it's the Holy Ghost, something in me, and it's in you, and I'm begging, Elkhorn will never ring the bell. Will never ring the bell. 
Moms and dads, don't ring the bell. Youth group, please, in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, please never ring the bell. Y'all get this? Y'all get this? How many of y'all received that today? I've been hurt. <laughs> I've been hurt bad. I've had bad days. <laughs> I've lost two children. I've been in jail. I've been divorced. But I will not ring the bell. We're not. Not You can't either. So I feel the Holy Spirit. We've had 10 people to answer their call here at this church. Where are they at? Can we tell you where they're at? They've rang the bell. See, everybody wants to be a preacher until it comes preaching time. Everybody wants the icing on the cake, but they don't want the hell in the hallway. Everybody wants the good things and the limelight. And I like them too. I ain't going to lie. Boy, I like it. But here's what I found out. When everybody goes, boy, we're having some good preaching today. There's a knife in the other one. Watch it. I'm telling you, I've been in ministry long enough. I know how people are. Because you know what? They was the same way when Jesus walked on the face of the earth. See, if you're going to serve the Lord this day and time, you've got to be sold out. Come on, help me preach. You gotta be sold out. 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 You gotta be sold out in ministry. You gotta have it branded in your mind. That I'm telling you, I'm not gonna stop. You say, Brian, what if sickness comes your way? I'm not gonna stop. Brian, what if we fire you? Watch this. I'm not gonna stop. Brian, what if this don't go your way? If what if that don't go your way? I'm not gonna stop. I'm not ringing the bell. How many, listen, how, listen to me. How many of y'all are not going to ring the bell? Listen to me. If you raise your hand, caution, beware, be ready, because hell week's coming. Don, it's coming. Who do we think we are? Do we think we're just going to get saved and have a Hallmark gospel in, in us? Have a blue light special go off every day? Return it back to Walmart and get a return? Let me ask you a question. Who, who do we think we are to say we're not going to ever have persecution? Let me show you something. I thought about somebody in the Bible. I want you to turn, if you would, in your Bibles with me real quick. Acts chapter 20. Or you can look up here on the screen. Acts chapter 20, verse 22 through 24. I love this. Look at this. And now behold, I go bound in the Spirit into Jerusalem. Y'all watch me. I'm going to help set somebody free really quick. Y'all ready? Say, I got you, preacher. Come on, say, I got you, preacher. Watch this. When, you are, when you're in the ministry, you are bound in the Spirit. So no matter if God plants you in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, or the most other parts of the world, I am bound in the Spirit. That means when I show up, I'm bound in the Spirit, and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Because why? Well, I'm bound. I'm bound. I've got Jesus around me, over me, under me, in me. Sounds like I'm going to win. Sounds like I'm going to win. He says, not knowing, watch this, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. What things are going to come? Watch this. Saved at the Holy Ghost. Everybody say Holy Ghost. Yeah. Witness in every city saying that bonds and affliction abide me. In other words, it's coming. It's coming. Watch this. Go on. But none of these things shall move me. Can I be honest with you? And I'm going to shoot you straight. Cover your toes just for a moment. We got too many sissy Christians. Tough word. We got too many sissy churches that when things don't go our way, the first thing we do, they move. They back out. They get away. But he says, none of these things shall what? Come on. Move me. Nothing will move me. Neither count my life dear unto myself. In other words, if you're being moved, you know why? You're more important than what God's doing in you. 
You got pride in your life, and you're going to get your way. And if you don't get your way, you're going to dismiss yourself. You shall be moved. But if you've got God in you, you're bound in him. No matter where you stand, no matter where you go, God goes before me. He's behind me. He'll push me. He'll stand me up. I'm not moving. I shall not be moved. So that I might finish what? With what? Watch this. Ministry should have joy. There's not going to be all happy days, but I'm telling you, I've got the joy of Jesus at Elkhorn. I've got the joy of God right now in my life. I am happy. Happy, 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 happy. Yes, I'm happy. Hallelujah. Preach myself happy. I've got joy. I've got the joy, 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 joy. Where? Where? I got the joy. Two, 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 for real. Do you really have the joy? Do you really got it in your spirit this morning? I will not break the rank, and I will not ring that bell. I've got the joy of the Holy Ghost in me, and nothing's going to move me. I've made my mind up. I'm not even 90% sold out in my mind. I'm 100% sold out in my mind. Yeah, I'm, you can't shut me up, back me up. Ah, you can't do anything because I've got the what? Joy in my life. Hallelujah. Watch this. And what? And the what? Whoops. I got the joy. I'm going to finish my course. And the what? Let me ask you a question. What are y'all serving? What ministry are you in right now? You say, Brian, you shouldn't ask me that. Yes, I should. Where are you serving? Where is your ministry? Where are you getting dirty at? We're taking course in your life right now. Watch this. Which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. The grace of God. I think about Jesus in this right here. I thought about Jesus and that he was beaten with 39 lashes. I thought about Jesus that he was spit upon. I thought about Jesus that we just, we, rem- we know it here. We know it here, but it's not drop 16. We know, you know that you're saved. Boy, it's a tough message, isn't it? Y'all okay? Y'all still breathing? Y'all still good? You still got the joy? Amen. Listen, Coach reminded me this morning, he said, if you're too busy for God, you're too busy. We know it here. But we keep adding and adding and adding. We give God our leftovers. Ministry suffers. You lose your joy. And the reason why you lose your joy is because your priorities are not right. If your family's not in order, your house is not in order, your church won't be in order. It just keeps going. The country won't be in order. Your nation won't be in order. I just wonder if that why the United States of America is in so much chaos right now. Because it's not in order. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You put God first. Husbands, put your wife second. Wives, put your, your husband second. Put your family in there. Watch me. Watch me. Put church third and put fourth. work fourth. You're in order. You're in order. But if you've got work before number two, number three, or number one, you're out of order. You're going to lose your joy. You're going to be tired. You won't be in ministry. You're going you're gonna to blame everybody around you. You're going to be miserable. Next thing you know, you're going to break rank. I quit. You've got a lot of pastors today leaving churches that God called them to, and they're not big enough men to stand up and, you know what, take it and be a man. They want to break rank, and, and they'll ring the bell. I guarantee we've got marriages right now. How much y'all want to bet me? Right now, under this teaching, right now, there's somebody, there's a marriage under me right now. It's a prophetic word right now. Here you are. You've got a bell in your hand, and next thing you know, here's what you're going to do. I can't take it. He makes me mad. He makes me sick. He won't help me with the dishes. He won't even mow the yard. He won't do this. (laughs) 
we got people right here today in the ministry, right now, with a bell in their hand. Yeah, they, I don't like them anyway. They're ringing the bell. How many of you know I'm preaching truth today? You may not like it, but it's truth. Look at this, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Praise team, you guys go. Put your mark. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. Y'all ready? This is Paul. Paul said, of the Jews, five times received 40 stripes, saved one. He got 39 lashes. Paul got beat with a whip for 39 lashes. How many of y'all have ever been whipped with a, well, beat with a whip 39 times until you almost die? Anybody? Okay, let's go on. Let's go on. Three times I was beaten with rods. How many of y'all have ever been beaten with a rod? Three times. Nobody? Okay, let's go on. I once was stoned with rocks. Anybody ever been stoned with rocks? Okay. Three times I suffered a shipwreck. Now, y'all may have had a boat wreck. But how many of y'all have ever been in a ship and y'all wrecked three times? Shipwreck. Okay, let's go on. A night and a day I've been in the deep. In other words, for one and a half days or one day, he was thrown out into the, to the, to the lake, to a, to a river. And there he stood. He was there for one whole day, day and night. With no floaty device? I don't know how he did it. No food? No water? Watch this. I, the, the journeys also in pearls and waters and pearls of robbers got beat up. And in pearls of my own countrymen, his own family members, his own family and his own city beat him up. In pearls by the heathen, in pearls in the city, in pearls in the wilderness, in pearls in the sea, in pearls along the false brethren. Let's go. In weariness and in painfulness, in watchings often, he hungered, he thirsts, in fastings often. I was cold and I was naked. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me, what? Daily. The care of all the churches. He was still a pastor. All them things he went through, he was still a pastor. Watch this. I love Paul. This man was my bomb giggity. He said, who is weak? I'm not. I'm not weak. Who is offended? Who got hurt at church? <laughs> and I burned not. In other words, he had a desire in his mind. He made up his mind. If I was going to be a Navy SEAL, I'd be the best they ever had. I'm not ringing the bell. I'm not, I'm not breaking rank. <laughs> I'm not quitting God. Because watch this. If you quit ministry, guess who you're quitting? God. God. Now listen, if you're mad, listen, I'm going to help you. If you're mad, your heart's not right. Number two, it's because you're not in ministry. If you're mad. All right? So either your heart's not right or you're not, you're, something's not right for ministry right now. 